Food doesn't necessarily mean physical substance, but consciousness is food for higher density beings. These entities are feeding off our emotions and energy, and it seems they are trying to keep us in a frequency prison through genetic and other forms of manipulation, like implanting certain social, religious and new age belief systems. And maybe these aliens are not evil or bad to begin with, but just as bad as a human being who farms chickens for food and has a garden where he grows plants to eat. We also genetically alter our food, don't we? All is consciousness and life feeds on life. Whoever said that we are on top of the food chain anyway? As above, so below. Some people ask, if the negative aliens are really here and so technologically superior, why haven't they attacked and taken over? Any openly hostile alien invasion, as seen in numerous Hollywood blockbusters, can only be bogus because only a primitive race like us would act like that. A higher intelligence with a technology beyond our present understanding is far more efficient and subtle. The most efficient takeover is if the target chooses out of free will to be captured, yet believing to be free. A deeper insight in that regard is given by Michael Topper in his article the positive and negative realms of higher densities. We have to understand here that the true negative realm agenda is to eat consciousness. So this actually prevents an overt takeover in literal physical terms. If an invasion was detected, this would mean that the veil would be lifted and all would see the man behind the curtain and would be disgusted and turn away. Just as in the Wizard of Oz, those ruby slippers have to be obtained very carefully. Gathering the essence is an art of great subtlety. The negative alien plan is, in its purest sense, stalking. The aim of stalking is to create a completely controlled artificial environment composed of thoroughly predictable human behaviors, made predictable because they have been programmed to respond to cues of conditioning, and all of this revolves around a story that is actually untrue and wholly misrepresentative of the real negative aim. The primary object of negative stalking is to persuade through strongly influenced but not robotic behavior patterns the free choice of the targeted consciousness to align with negative higher density existence. Because in the long run the object is the eating of functioning units of consciousness by the negative hierarchy with free will intact. It is not good food otherwise. And Laura Nadiajic adds the higher density positive entities are light beings. The higher density negative entities are light eaters. Love is light is knowledge. When they induce belief against what is objectively true, they have eaten the light knowledge of the person who has chosen blind belief over fact. When you believe a lie, you have allowed the eating of your energy of awareness. This is also why higher spiritually evolved benevolent ETs would never save us, because this is the way of life and they know not to mess with free will. Positive ETs and aliens respect free will. They understand that this is part of evolution and the lessons within that. There are accounts of information and help from higher sources stating that it is up to us to discern truth from deception. Everything is part of creation. Nothing is better or worse. Evolution is a process of learning, becoming aware and conscious, gaining knowledge and hence wisdom and love. The more one can see the world as it is, objectively, as the universe sees itself, the higher the degree of awareness and state of being. Higher evolved positive alien beings may assist and guide us in more subtle ways if we are able to see and know how to listen. But the work comes down to us. No one is going to do it for us. As the saying goes, the teacher appears when the student is ready. They don't interfere with our lessons we need to learn for the sake of our own evolution, personally and collectively.
Knowledge protects ignorance and dangers. The more we gain knowledge and understanding, not simply book smart knowledge, and the more we become objective with ourselves and the world and raise awareness, the better we can see and act accordingly. This means carefully discerning truth from lies. There is truth to certain channeled material. However, one needs to understand how to read and interpret it. Looking at what we found out about manipulation through hyperdimensional beings, it is obvious that a lot of channeled material these days is suspect to great deception from higher sources. There are different levels and degrees of channelings, depending on many factors. The topic of channel information needs to be examined very carefully. Higher sources may be able to contact us that way, when asked for, and when it doesn't infringe free will or interferes with the learning process of the one asking. However, who is coming through and what is the source really saying is the question. Channeled material should never be taken as fact and proof alone, but one should cross-reference it with other material and combine it with scientific research. There are some sources that actually encourage that approach and tell us that it is up to us to learn, discern and gain knowledge, hence becoming more aware and conscious and consciously engaging in the process of evolution and awakening. In that sense, we are the ones we've been waiting for, as the Hopi Indians would say, or we are our own rescue team, as another channel source states. But just focusing on love and light and visualizing the best outcome is not going to work and actually feeds the negative agenda. This attitude may be the greatest deception and is exactly what the alien intruders want us to do. They may be behind the emerging New Age religion and New Age thought to begin with, and they seem to be taking advantage of our good nature. Who is to judge what is a good outcome to begin with? Good is a very subjective statement. What is a good outcome for the aliens might be not so good for humanity and vice versa. We need to understand our subjective limited view and perception of good and bad, dark and light, in regards to the big scheme of creation and all intelligent life within. Are we bad because we eat plants and animals? True spiritual work entails more than just focusing our intention of what is possible. It means becoming aware and becoming aware, conscious, entails seeing the world in oneself as it is, as one is, objectively, dark and light, without rose-colored glasses on or projecting into it how we like it to be or not to be. Before we can create something new and better, we need to clearly see what is going on, in ourselves and in the world, otherwise more damage will be done, and it's like a blind man stumbling around in the porcelain store. There's still much to find out about this topic. This is just some food for thought, no pun intended. However, one thing is for sure, there's already enough well-documented material out there that shows and proves the possibility of an alien agenda which might not be quite what we have hoped for. The high strangeness and paranormal aspect of this phenomena make it very hard to study. The fact that these beings and UFOs act in stealth and secrecy with obvious intent to keep the truth away from humanity at large doesn't make the issue easier and doesn't speak well for them. One has to ask, why would benevolent beings act that way? Why would good aliens take thousands if not millions of people against their free will? What are they really here for? In the words of Dr. Carla Turner, and it becomes clear from these details that the beings who are doing such things can't be seen as spiritually enlightened with the best interest of the human race in mind. Something else is going on, something far more painful and frightening in many, many abduction encounters. As to researchers who claim that the ETs are here to help us evolve some higher consciousness or that they're here for some other positive purpose, saving our planet, promoting world peace, etc., I challenge those researchers to incorporate anomalous data into this view. Theories are starting places for research, not proven conclusions, and UFO researchers must be willing to expand and alter their pet theories according to the data they uncover. 
It would be wonderful if we could shape ET experiences into something positive. But until the details of abduction encounters, all the details, are given serious consideration, I think it's dangerous to cling to theories that ignore data that will not fit. We owe it to ourselves to seek the whole truth. We need to get out of our habit of romanticizing anything that has to do with alien intelligent life forms, according to our wishful thinking. Nor deny the UFO reality completely out of conditioned non-belief. Nor buying into any fear. This means growing up and becoming spiritually mature, being able to look at the world as it is, the dark and the light, without preference, and understanding what dark and light really means to begin with, moving from subjectivity towards objectivity. Re-examining our beliefs and so-called spiritual knowledge we have gained over the years, which we at times just repeat without questioning. Everything from Eastern and Western religious teachings to mainstream New Age stuff and various spiritual teachers who have been on Oprah and on mainstream TV, marketing a passive, self-centered kind of spirituality to the masses in this billion-dollar heavy New Age industry. What is really going on? A true awakening or further manipulation and control? The deception in this day and age is massive and cannot be underestimated. There is much disinformation in the New Age movement and UFO field these days. Most of them are not even purposely spreading disinfo, but they are duped themselves, caught in their own subjective tunnel vision and wishful thinking. As Laura Nadjajic states, Let me make it clear at this point that I'm convinced that a lot of honest, sincere, hard-working individuals are being duped and or controlled without being fully aware of it. From the viewpoint of esoteric work, truth and objectivity should be one's principal goal. It's interesting how the popular New Age teachings these days promote subjectivity, to just focus on the self and shut out the outside, to ignore the bad, and keep manifesting reality according to one's desires and wishes. Is this really what spirituality and conscious evolution is all about? Perhaps the popular New Age teachings and create your own reality concepts are corrupt in many ways. Universal truths mixed with lies, painting a false picture of what spiritual evolution truly means, making us believe we are already God on our level to keep us in our self-inflicted prison. In this day and age of transformation and global change, it may be advisable to look more into what Don Juan called the topic of all topics, UFOs, hyperdimensional realities and the beings inhabiting them, the magicians that play with us, our reality and consciousness. It is also not something that is just now happening. It seems to have been going on for quite a while, thousands of years. These beings are operating outside the realm of space and time. And that is exactly why the manipulation and control is so unnoticed by the general population. It transcends our comprehension and works through our own minds. It is the subtlety of this phenomena which makes the deception so hard to see, because it is already ingrained in our way of life, our culture and civilization. This also puts a big question mark on the topic of disclosure. The UFO phenomena has a strong paranormal and hyperdimensional aspect to it that can be simply ignored. Many supporters of disclosure and exopolitics seem to ignore or oversimplify that issue.